Well, I'm going to cheat a bit and say let's not worry about having the sides of the antenna flare out like a horn. Let's try designing just a waveguide antenna that will work at 2.4 gigahertz. A waveguide antenna is basically like a horn antenna except the sides don't flare out. Also, note that we have flexibility in the shape of the waveguide. It doesn't have to be square or rectangular. It can also be cylindrical, like as shown here. If we were to look up how to get a waveguide antenna to work, we would find that we need the diameter to be around point, between 0.6 lambda and 0.75 lambda. Then the length of the waveguide depends on the diameter here. This is the length of the wave waveguide. And all of this, this whole quantity, is the equivalent to the wavelength of the signal in the waveguide. So I'm going to call that lambda g. And lastly, s needs to be 0, a quarter of a lambda g. s is the distance from the end of the waveguide antenna to where the connector is, the source is. Generally, the smaller the diameter, the longer the waveguide needs to be. If we plug in some values, the wavelength at 2.4 gigahertz is 12.2 centimeters. If the diameter, then we could calculate as being 8.3 centimeters, then the length would need to be 21 centimeters. Well, if we think about these dimensions, it's possible you could find a food can of about this size on the shelf in a grocery store. It might depend on the country whether we can find a can with the right dimensions, because regular 16 ounce or 28 ounce cans here in the US are not long enough. But here's an example aluminum, aluminum can found in another country that is a great size. We can see the parts that are needed to turn this can into a waveguide right here. And they're really the number of parts you need are qu quite minimal aside from the can. Once assembled, this kind of a antenna is called a can antenna. Here is the radiation pattern for a can antenna operating at 2.4 gigahertz. You can see the probe here extending into the waveguide. If we wanted to protect this antenna from the weather, we could put the entire can antenna into a PVC tube and seal the ends with caps and glue. Of course, one big question is how well can we expect this antenna to work? We know the radiation pattern, but would if we had one on each of the islands, would it be capable of sending a signal and receiving it 15 kilometers away? One quantity that is helpful in answering this question is the directivity, which is a measure of the directionality of an antenna's radiation pattern. Specifically, it's the antenna's time average power density that is radi radiated in the direction of interest, or max maximum direction, divided by the radiated time average power density averaged over all directions around the antenna. The denominator here can be written as P radiated over 4 pi r squared if we want units of watts per meter squared and the units we want will depend on what units we have in the numerator. We want them to be consistent. Or if the units in the numerator are watts per stair radians, we could write the denominator as p radiated over 4 pi, which would give us units of watts per stair radians. Now, careful, both the numerator and the dot denominator are time average values. So both are time averaged. So the AV here in the denominator it stands for average and this tells us that the S in the denominator is spatially averaged around all directions around the antenna. Alternatively, if you know F, which is radiated, the normalized radiation intensity, you can calculate the directivity using this. Or if you know the beam pattern solid angle, you can use that to calculate the directivity as well. Now, I say here that the quantity is dimensionless, and it's often given in terms of DBI. DBI means the dB level 
that is given is relative to an isotropic antenna. That's what the I stands for. What's the directivity of an isotropic antenna? An isotropic antenna has a directivity of 1 because S max in the numerator is going to be equal to S average in the denominator. So the smallest value that D can have is 1. And this is because S max can only be the same or bigger than S average for any antenna. So for example, if we say the directionality of a half wave dipole, D half wave is 1.64, if we were to calculate that and determine it's 1.64, this means that the amount of power radiated in the direction of maximum radiation for a half wave dipole is 1.64 times higher than that for an isotropic antenna. And if we want to convert this 1.64 quantity to units of dBi, we would take 10, log base 10, of 1.64. Now technically we're dividing by 1 because it's relative to the directivity of an isotropic antenna. And that would be equal to 2.15 dBi. By the way, although the Ulibi book only uses units of dB, it's good practice to use units of dBi, and that's what I'm going to use uh, with an isotropic antenna as a reference antenna. Or you might see dBd sometimes used. That uses a dipole antenna as the reference antenna instead of just dB, so that we know exactly what the reference antenna is. And antenna manufacturers can't fool us by using a different antenna as the reference antenna. A quantity that is even better than the directivity of an antenna is its gain. The gain of an antenna describes how much power is transmitted in the direction of peak radiation, or, or the direction of interest, compared to what would be radiated by a lossless isotropic antenna supplied with the same amount of power. This means that in the denominator here, we're going to use the total power supplied to the antenna, PT, rather than the total power radiated by the antenna, P rad, radiated as we did for directivity. And again, the denominator can be written as PT over 4 pi if we want watts per stair radians, or it can be written as PT over 4 pi r squared watts per meter squared. So the units match the, the numerator. So in other words, gain takes into account the losses in addition to the directionality. And this means the gain can tell us how well an antenna can transform the power at its input terminals to radiated power in a particular direction of interest. So as a result, we can also write the gain in terms of direc the directionality as the efficiency uh, times the directionality. And as for directivity, the gain is dimensionless, and you will often, often see it written in units of dBi. So here are a few questions relating to gain. What is the lowest amount of gain that an antenna can have? Well, due to losses, uh, I suppose the lowest amount of gain that we could have is even zero. And how high can an antenna's gain be? Well, an uh, and antenna's gain can be also arbitrarily high. The gain can be even as high as 10,000 for dish satellites. I'll, push, I'll put 10,000 plus. And last question, what does it mean to have a gain of 3 dBi in a particular direction? Well, it means the antenna receives 3 dB more or twice as much power than a lossless isotropic antenna. In that particular direction. Let's work through an example. Suppose an antenna has a directivity of four, a radiation resistance of 40 ohms, and a loss resistance of 10 ohms. Find the antenna's efficiency and the maximum power gain.